Hey guys, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about my journey and my experience to get my first FPV. And if you are someone started with your FPV journey, then the, some of the decisions and some of the lessons that I learned may be helpful for you. So let's go ahead and see what are the steps I took and what are the challenges I faced and discuss about the components. And I would also like to compare between DJI Mavic Pro and traditional FPV drones. So let's go ahead and start. Now, before doing anything in FPV, before buying any parts, the first thing you should do is watch as many YouTube videos as possible so that you know where you are going to put yourself into, what are the expectation, what are the frustration that can come uh, on the way. There are so many great FPV pilots making contents. They are pretty much a video for everything. And if you're watching this video, chances are you have already been through some of the great videos. G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures. My friends, today we are talking again. Of hey guys, thank you for joining me. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. Next thing, as part of your first purchase, I would recommend you to get a radio first. And I have chosen this Effort Sky X7. And uh, not because this is the best or the latest radio, but uh, this is one of the most common radio out there. It's uh, not very expensive. And as it's been in the market for a while, there are so many YouTube videos and there are YouTube videos for almost every setup and everything that you ever wanted to know about this radio. And then there are other radios as well, like uh, Fly Sky, Radio Master, Jumper. There are so many options you have. This is something that you can get for 110 to 120 bucks. And I got it secondhand, in fact, and I got it for only like $75. So that's a very good deal. I mean, you can start with your uh, experience and if you don't like it, you can resell it again. So it's not a very expensive thing to start with. Let me also talk about the basic differences between a radio from DJI Mavic and radio of FPV. So first, you can see the size difference and the weight difference. This thing is heavy and solid build. So the first difference you will realize the throttle button doesn't come to center automatically. In left and right it will come back and this one in both up and down and left and right it will come back it's a mode 2 radio whereas for DJI drone both button will come back to center irrespective of which direction you move it the biggest difference of a FPV drone and a drones from unique or DJI is that DJI basically controls the pitch they won't let you control the pitch and the roll that means this button is responsible for pitch up and down and roll left and right whereas this one is for yaw left and right and then the throttle up and down the same thing for mavic a little bit different for mavic this one takes you forward and backward left and right like gliding left and right whereas this is the same like throttle and then yaw left and right so only this button will be similar to this one but this is totally different so having said that, first you get the radio and then the next thing you should do is get a simulator to practice in computer. The reason you need a, a simulator is because the control is so different between a DJI drone and a FPV drone that uh, it doesn't matter how many years of flying experience you have with other DJI like drones, it will be totally new for you when you are getting in yourself into FPV. And you really don't want to crash a new FEV drone while you're practicing, rather you have some level of practice in the simulator itself. Now, speaking about simulator, there are different simulators and I can recommend some videos where I think Mr. Steele actually had a comparison between different simulators that will be helpful for you. I have tried the Freerider and uh, the Liftop, but uh, Freerider didn't work for me. The setting and configuration just never worked. Um, it, it's uh, like uh, $5 or so and the lift up is around 19.99 and it worked really good for me uh, you can download it from steam now there is one thing that when you are trying to connect your receiver with your um, simulator some people can face a problem that your usb controller is not recognizing the device and even it's just recognized as a device but you cannot basically do any uh, control so for that i would recommend some youtube videos so let me share the link 
So in this video they have actually discussed um, it is a driver related issue you may have to roll back the driver and if it doesn't work still you can read the comments where people are discussing what are the other fix they have uh, introduced in their computer and it should be working for you. I mean, it took me several months to figure out because on 2019 I think September Windows did a update that basically screw up the USB driver some, somehow. So we are pretty much done with talking about the radio and the simulator now next thing is the drone i got this iFlight uh, bind and flight drone with uh, fr sky uh, rxsr receiver and there are different options for you when you are going to have your first fpb drone many people will say that go ahead and build your first drone the, the build is fun and uh, you will get to know every parts and in case of accident if you break it you know how to fix it because you made it in the first place that is true partially but there is one challenge because of which i bought this one that is first of all in order to build a drone you have to study a lot you have to research every individual component their compatibility which part works with which one and which does not and then you have to order them separately and not necessarily you will get every part from the same store some may be out of stock then you have to wait for that part and and if you don't know soldering that is a altogether different issue and basically you need a lot of patience to build your first quad and even after that it, it doesn't work after spending weeks of research and uh, hours of soldering things together and if it doesn't work it will be very discouraging for you so what my recommendation is for the first quad get a bind and fly which is ready to fly basically you get your radio practice in simulator get the drone which is ready to fly just bind it with your uh, transmitter and there are several videos that will teach you how to bind pretty much all kind of radios and the receivers and first try flying with already built drone and if you're satisfied then you can buy parts and eventually you can start soldering and make your second drone and if once that is done you can sell your first drone in that way you don't have to wait and you don't have to have the patience of building your first drone at least you have something to fly so without further ado let's go ahead and unbox it okay so this is iFlight NASGUL 5.6S bind and fly drone so let's go ahead and unbox it all the accessories in the bag some screws and all some additional uh, extra propellers and a bunch of stickers. Okay, so this is the drone and this blue foam thing is totally something I came up with and attached it with the frame because in my initial days I'm not able to land it properly and then I didn't want the frame to get any damage. So, so in the drone you see this battery, Tattoo Fan Fly, and it's a very cost effective like only $19 for this battery there are different batteries options and I would also recommend some battery videos that will tell you about how to take care of LiPo batteries and what kind of LiPo batteries are good for you whether 4S or 6S so this is a 6S build but 6S drone can be flown with a 4S battery it will be slower sluggish but still that will be actually good when you are just starting out and so one thing you have to highlight here is uh, some magic controls the pitch and roll by itself to take you forward or backward left or right whereas you are basically all on yourself to control your angle of pitch and the throttle to take it forward or left or whatever kind of maneuver you want to do now after the drone the next important thing is the goggle now not necessarily you have to have the goggle on the first day itself you can spend few days flying with uh, line of sight trying to hover or landing it and making some simple circles and box kind of thing and you need to have that practice of line of sight because that can come handy at some point now when you are about to select your goggle there are so many options starting from $40 to $600 or $700 like every range there is something so Fetshark is one of the most famous companies out there uh, when we speak about goggle and then there is a uh, sky zone there is Asian most more of the budget friendly goggle and then there is orca so newest uh, fat shark hd02 is almost uh, 500 or 500 plus dollars and uh, then you have to have the receiver the antennas and it will go up. and so i got this 
HD3 and I will make a separate video talking about this one. So I got it uh, as it is already three years old. I got it in uh, almost half the price of the latest one. And then the rapid fire uh, receiver and the Lumiere antennas. You can get any goggle based on your budget and a goggle is going to give you the actual flying FPV experience. So now those are the basic things uh, to start with uh, your FPV first person flying experience. Uh, FPV can be done by RC car or RC boat or RC plane and quadcopter anything. But I have been flying DJI Mavic Pro almost for three or four years. And But when I got into FPV, it was so different for me. I was crashing like a kid and it, it is still taking me time to learn all the controls i'm still flying in angle and horizon mode and sometimes practicing with acro uh, as per my experience if you're starting with spend time researching internet researching reading forums and youtube videos remember one thing in most of the videos you will see the bnf uh, quad easily getting bound with the my radio and flying out of the box but more often than not that doesn't happen because even if you had proper radio and you get the BNF quad with the receiver built in <clears throat> while binding you may face several challenges for example bound is successful but there is no receiver input uh, in beta flight and sometimes even the bind won't work sometimes everything seems to work but still propeller will not rotate in the orientation you need to do so for all individual cases there you have to do Google search and study the forum and you can drop me comment and if, if, if I am aware of that thing I can direct you to the right channel right video or the forum anything uh, I faced a lot of travel I mean first of all my firmware in the RXSR receiver was different than the firmware of the uh, radio that I'm having and my radio had ACCST uh, chipset where I think the RXSR was having access uh, chipset so there were some miscommunication between the chipset, so I had to have a lot of trouble with that. And eventually I got help from people online and uh, made it through. Once you start collecting your equipment, I would recommend you to get a uh, few additional things. Get a cheap soldering iron and get some extra batteries, uh, battery chargers and all. Last but not the least, the beta flight. There are videos of Joshua Bardwell talking about every aspect pretty much about the beta flight. So that is pretty much uh, all about how to get into the journey of FPV. It is fun, it is exciting. At the same time, you have to be very patient and uh, you have to think about your budget accordingly because whatever budget you are probably planning, you are going to overshoot that. You are going to get things that you didn't expect first, but eventually, but those are not very expensive. Like small antennas and extra props and batteries and straps so on the way you'll be buying them so that's all guys and hopefully you'll be enjoying your flight and if any question just let me know thanks